Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Some say that as human beings, not only do we love heroes, but we need heroes. And social scientists, they cite five reasons as to what is it about heroes that we human beings love. So don't worry, we're not going to go all five of them. But they say that heroes offer us what we call emotional elevation. When you speak about a hero, there is this sense of awe that you feel, admiration, love, and it just literally, it elevates you emotionally. And that's a need that we human beings crave for. They also say that heroes are important because they revive hope in us. The hero does something, and then the hero inspires the people. And people just love that. They're waiting for that person that just inspires them, and then people follow. They also say that heroes do something really interesting, and that is they offer us the ideal alternative that we're all looking for. Don't like it the way it is. But somebody goes and speaks and does something that is so ideal, and we crave towards that ideal because the reality that we are living is not a good one. So we yearn to that ideal, and the hero offers that ideal. They also say that heroes, they heal our psychological wounds, despair, resentment, and then all of a sudden the hero does something. The resentment goes away. That despair is replaced with optimism. It's replaced with hope. So they say that heroes, they heal our psychological wounds. And then finally, I guess I'm saying all five, and then finally, they also say that heroes, they ask us the difficult questions. Would you be doing what the hero just did? The reason why we're talking about heroes, this was the topic of the khutbah today, because today or yesterday coincides with the 90th anniversary of the execution of Umar al-Mukhtar, somebody who fought the Italians in Libya, man who started fighting in his 50s, captured in 70, at 73, and he was executed on that day. 90 years later, we're still talking about Umar al-Mukhtar. Not only are we talking about him, but at the time that they were executing him, he looked at the Italian general back then, and he said to him, he said, you know, I will die. But I tell you, he said, I will outlive the people who are hanging me. As we speak, there is a university named Umar al-Mukhtar. Several mosques named Umar al-Mukhtar. Almost in every country, Arab country especially, you will find that there is a street named Umar al-Mukhtar. What happened? وَالذِّكْرُ لِلْإِنسَانِ بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ عُمْرٌ ثَانِي He said that when people leave a legacy, that even after their death, people still continue talking about them, that in itself is another life. So you look into these heroes, somebody like Umar al-Mukhtar, with some very, very little means. I mean, we're talking about Italy. We're talking about Mussolini, man. We're talking back then. What does he have for him to put the fight that he put against the Italians? They've been looking for the man for over 20 years. And then they finally capture him. And there is this dialogue that takes place between him and this Italian general. They said that the Italian general was so depressed that he actually took a a vacation, he went to Italy because the press was just pounding him. How can you not get this guy? He's in the middle of the desert and we can't get him. When he heard that he's being captured, he took a, you know, a special plane and he flew to Libya because he really wanted to meet this guy. And there is this dialogue that takes place. Now, see, for us poor people, we crave. I want to say, so what happened? What, just, what went on? 
You know, how, how did Umar Mukhtar give it to him? How did he wreck his argument? What was his comeback? And that's when you see that, you know, that, that emotional elevation that just takes place as the story is being told. And this is not just about Umar Mukhtar. You know, when they asked that question to Malcolm X, he wiped the floor with them. You know, the way that Dr. King responded to that question, man, he made mockery out of them. You know, Gandhi, when they did, and then you start just, you feel that, that, that elation. It, it feels good. Even though, see, this is what happens is that there is this bully that bullies everybody, but nobody's doing anything about it. And then somebody musters up the courage and they go and they put a big fight and everybody just feels inspired by the fact that somebody had the courage to say something to the bully. And that inspires people. And then the Quran does not leave this behind. See, every time the Quran speaks, most of the stories, the heroes are the prophets of Allah. Well, as a reader of the Quran, you can say, I can never be like, I can never be the next Muhammad Sallallahu I can never be the next Musa or the next Isa or the next, I, I just can't. Then all of a sudden the Quran presents this hero. وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهُ أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ Confrontation is taking place between Musa and Fir'aun and, and the Pharaoh is now meeting with his advisors and then all of the sudden the Quran tells us about this man. وَقَالَ رَجْلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ A believing man يَكْتُمُ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ A believing man from the people of Fir'aun who had concealed his belief up to that point all of the sudden stands up. And then what does he say? Now remember he's addressing the Pharaoh and all the people around the Pharaoh said أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ Do you kill a man for the single sin that he says, My Lord is Allah? وَإِيَّكُوا كَاذِبًا فَعَلَيْهِ كَاذِبُهُ If he is a liar, then he bears the sin of his lie. وَإِيَّكُوا كَاذِبُ وَإِيَّكُوا صَادِقًا يُصِبْكُمْ بَعْضُ الَّذِي يَعِدُكُمْ Be careful man, but he is telling the truth. The calamity is that he is promising us they may befall upon us. Remember, we don't know his name, we don't know his age, we don't know if he was single or married, we don't know who his wife was. See now, as people who are interested and, 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 and really, they want to know more about that hero. And these details are nice, but they're not very crucial. But see, when somebody is a hero, you want to know all the details about them. You want to know what happened. But the Quran is telling you, anybody can actually be that hero. And that is why the Quran gives us some very vague information about who this person is. All we know is he is a man, he is a mu'min, a believer, and he stood up. What really makes him a hero, though, they say, is that this is a person that was benefiting from the status quo. See, for people to rebel because they were oppressed by Fir'aun, yeah, that's where usually heroes come from. But in this case, the hero came from within the household of Fir'aun. That makes him a hero. Because he was benefiting whatever Fir'aun was doing. He was directly benefiting from that. But he said, you know what? That's not fair. That is not good. And he stands up and he just lets them, he lets them have it. And as a reader of the Quran, you're looking for, you're looking for a hero. And this is not somebody who had supernatural powers. You know, they say that why, why part of why we like heroes, psychologists offer, they say that because heroes are actually our childhood friends. Remember when we were kids and we would watch all these cartoons and then the hero does something, saves the planet, they save the poor, they do this. And as kids, we love what we call al-qawwa al-mutlaqa. You know, that absolute power, as kids, we love it. So they say that heroes are our childhood friends. That's why we crave towards, towards them. Anyway, sorry, this is taking too long now. Apologies. But, 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 but the point here is that, you know, as, as, we, as we hear about somebody like Umar al-Mukhtar, you cannot but help and say, man, these are the type of heroes that I want to admire. Because there are many heroes out there. Some of them are pseudo-heroes. And some of them are just heroes to somebody else, but not to the community of the believers. But people like Umar al-Mukhtar, you know, are people that we, you know, they have recent history. So you want to look at them and you want to, and you want to admire them.
quote of Umar al-Mukhtar, he said, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ لَا نَسْتَسْلِمْ إِمَّا نَمُوتُ نُقَاتِلْ أَوْ نَمُوتُ He said, we are people that don't surrender. We either fight or we die in the, in the process. And that is beautiful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in understanding, Ya Rabbil Alameen.